All right, on to our next issue, which is climate change. And as I said before the news, what a pathetic turnout of brainwashed young people and Green Party supporters or, or fifth columnists turned out around the country for the strike for climate change. The strike you have when you don't have a job, kind of like a Clayton strike. Um, but despite um, that pathetic turnout, um, I noticed Jack Tame had drunk the woke juice on Q&A, whatever the very lowly rating um, polit political current affairs show he has. And he asked the question whether or not David Seymour took responsibility for encouraging climate change denial, which was just the most unbiased, unjournalistic, stupid, but stupid question I've ever heard a current affairs interviewer ask, and the headline was equally stupid. Um, pointing out that climate change did not cause Cyclone Gabriel, pointing out that the data doesn't show that the world is ending is not climate change denial. It is talking about facts. And one of the so-called facts that idiots like Jack Tame used to justify such silly questions is that Niwa says that we can expect more severe weather events like Cyclone Gabriel because of climate change. But last uh, week, and it's been watched by thousands of people and the subsequent interview with Weather Watch has been watched by tens of thousands of people. Last week, long-time investigative journalist Ian Wishart published the res uh, results of, uh, of his investigation and in going back over time and looking at, by barometric pressure, the lowness of barometric pressure, whether or not when Niwa said there are more extreme weather events caused by climate change, whether there had been. And lo and behold, in his Climate Affair report, Ian found that there were many, many worse weather events than Gabriel with more frequency a couple of hundred years ago, at least 1860s, I think, was one of the time periods he looked at. And the question is, why is Niwa lying to us? Because clearly, scientifically... Um, it doesn't make sense. So we've been trying, ever since that interview, to try and get a hold of Niwa, and I'm going to read to you in full, and Ian's listening to this, we're going to talk to him in a moment. This is from Jessica Rowley, one of, I imagine, five or six communications people at Niwa, the National Institute for Water and Atmospheric Research. Um, and they say, Niwa's historic weather events website. And their website has been used by all the woke journalists to say the weather's getting worse. That's because of climate change. We must stop drinking dairy. That's kind of the genesis of the stupidity we're reading now. Um, but here is what, and this is the only Jess, Jessica Rowley, can't provide anyone from Niwa to give us an interview on this and explain what Ian's written about. But here's what they said, and I want to read it in full so that you can understand how difficult it is getting the truth out of government departments. So here's what they said. The Historic Weathers Events website is a catalogue of major weather events in New Zealand over the last 200 years where significant damage or casualties occurred. Niwa sees it as a valuable resource provided primarily for the public and we are not aware of anything else that provides similar information for Aotearoa, New Zealand, in one place. The information it contains has been collated from newspaper reports, journals, books and databases kindly provided by various organisations and individuals and a lot of archive work went into building it. More historic data has been available online since the site was built. We continue to develop the site and will add missing events and additional details as we can, particularly those in the 1800s for which we still have to validate the data. The most recent update to the site was in 2021 and we are planning to continue this updating when resources are available. The Historic Weather Events website was not a data source NEWA used for the analysis that resulted in the assertion that Cyclone Gabriel was one of the most destructive weather events on record for Aotearoa. Ends Jess. Um, so that's it. That's all we are getting out of Niwa, and it's brilliant that, and that it answers not a single substantive question. 
Um, that Ian Wishart's excellent piece, Climate Affair, raised. Uh, Ian Wishart joins us now. Ian, you've had no more than that out of Niwa? No, we've had nothing more from Niwa, but I, I, I tell you this, that news release is, is damning, and, I, and this is the reason why. They reveal in the middle of the news release that uh, they don't have the additional details of the events in the 1800s, and they still have to validate the data for those before they can add it to the um, Historic Weather Events website. Now, what that means is they haven't got it validated or entered into their main database either, because if they had it, it'd just be a simple copy and paste mechanism. They could have updated the database easily. They don't have the Historic Weather Event records at all for the past, and that means that their statement at the end of the um, press release saying... Cyclone Gabriel was one of the most destructive weather events on record for Aotearoa. Well, they've tell us, told us how they didn't come up with that analysis, but what they don't tell us is how they did. Exactly, and, and it's clear from that press release that they don't have the details in their website, which means they can't make that comparison, which means basically that they are lying, which is the question I avoided last, last week. You say they are lying, but neither are lying to us. Yeah, I think it's, it's now reached the stage where there's been absolute radio silence until this. They're now admitting they don't have the data in their system. If they had, they would have copied and pasted across the Historic Weather Events website. They haven't done that. They're saying that they're still calling Gabriel one of the most destructive events on record. But what does on record actually mean? How good are their records? This, this entire farce has shown up that NEWA doesn't have the, doesn't have the record and has been effectively, in my opinion, bluffing it all the way through. Mm. The problem is, Ian, I wouldn't have a problem with a government department being incompetent, keeping bad records and not doing its job properly. How I almost expected of a bureaucracy. The problem I see is that the misinformation or disinformation, to use the common term, therefore, that NIWA has released, has caused a cascade of public opinion with serious consequences. And that is that mainstream media have swallowed the, this is the most destructive, they have then used the misinformation on climate to say, change to say it's climate change related when it's clearly not. And they then promulgate the idea that we must change government policies or stop drinking milk or anything. That's actually the consequence of this one piece of bureau bureaucratic incompetence, isn't it? That we end up living in a world that isn't based on science or facts. Yeah, but it's even worse than that. If you look at it this way, NEWA has been in existence for 31 years as a government research entity. In 31 years, they have never bothered, according to their press release, to fully research New Zealand's climate past, yet they have spent 31 years telling us how things are getting worse from the past. They have not done the work. Now, if they had done the work, you've got to ask the question, would, would subdivisions have been built in floodplains? Would NEWA's advice to council and government have been different 15, 20 years ago? And they said, no, we go back and we look at 1868, this is a real bad situation. We don't want to build here. They haven't done the work. This is costing people in terms of insurance policy premiums. It's costing people in terms of rebuilds. It's costing people in terms of petrol taxes and levies and all sorts of government things. The work simply hasn't been done. And this is New Zealand's supposedly premier climate research institute. This is a scandal of major proportions. Yeah. Ian, what response has there been? And let's just say it's good work you did. And I've seen the way you've, you've been white-handed in the past by if, what I call legacy media. Um, knee has been trending all weekend, or since you did your story on Twitter, which is, isn't necessarily a great metric to measure public interest by. But what response have you had to your Climate Affair report? It's been downloaded thousands of times and as you would have known your interviews that you've done with myself and Philip Duncan have been viewed tens of thousands of times there's huge traffic on our website and obviously on Twitter uh, I think you know, I watched out of interest you mentioned Legacy Media News Talk ZB published a piece over the weekend from me about record, records broken during summer without prompting from me or any, anything on Twitter that I said the, all the comments that followed that, that post on Twitter from ZB were well is it since records began or how good are their records this is the, this is the credibility problem that NIWA now has and the media now have they're consistently putting out these biggest on record biggest on record biggest on record nobody's asking the question how good are the records we now know the records are crap um now you asked about legacy media it's a bit like watching invasion of the body snatchers meets the stepford wise meets george orwell except to tell you this orwell undersold the future <laughs> it's worse than we thought yeah ian can you just hold your phone a little Closer, we just it's just a little bit muffled. Are you on the speaker? Sure, no, I'm, I'm, I'm holding. 
Okay, that's all right. That's better according to Ben. All right, so we've got completely <laughs> erroneous and incomplete data to make claims that have massive political impact in this country and public opinion impact. I would say that this is someone like that someone like say Judith Collins, the science and technology spokesperson for National, should get into. What about opposition political parties? Have any of them really shown any guts or any willingness to engage on this? There's been radio silence, which makes you think that we're living in a one-party state now. The um, over over the weekend, Philip Duncan from Weather Watch approached uh, the National Party and said and, and raised his issues about me was lack of transparency. They said they weren't interested. Um, so with National and Labor singing the same song, with the media in lockstep, I mean, as I said, we haven't seen a single fact checker or explainer tackle me on this, and that says that speaks volumes because they're sitting there taking heat like they've never taken before. Uh, from both myself, you, yourself, other, other alternative media, and certainly through Twitter. The media are taking a hammering on this issue, and they're silent. So everyone's walking in lockstep. It's like a one-party state, as I said. Yeah. Well, look, I, I'm not going to draw those. Uh, you can just see the very, very simple logic of the point you've, you've raised, Ian. And I do think it's a national scandal. Um, and I think those poor kids, the very small number of, of school-aged children who went on the student... Uh, climate change mark on fire, they've just been sold a pup, aren't they? They have, and I guess the, the way that people can, can get around this the, the media blackout and the political blackout is people can download the report for Climate Affair, they can email it to their local school science teachers, they can get into classrooms that way, and every time the media come out with a statement saying, quoting me, we're saying biggest on record or whatever, get in behind on the social media, paste their posts with copies of this report. Oh God, don't tell people how to troll the anti-vaxxers do that to me all the time. It drives me up the wall. You know, the, 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 report, the report is important because it is, it's, a, it's a back to reality check and it's not being done in the media. Mm. It's not being done on the mainstream media, at least. Yeah. Uh, and as I said, it has big cost implications for our country. It has fear implications for the psychology of the nation. Uh, clearly, people are drinking the Kool-Aid and, and, and believing this stuff. And, and the problem we've got is that it, it does come at a, at a price. And as I said... If NIWA haven't done the job of researching New Zealand's past climate, and if NIWA are not disclosing their full operational data to people like Weatherwatch and, and the like so this can be independently peer-reviewed, then the cost implications are huge, the transparency implications are huge, and I do again ask the question, if NIWA had done the work that even I'd done uh, over the last two weeks and done it 20 years ago, would building decisions have been made differently and would people not be facing the, the, the crisis that they're in now. Yeah. Look, Ian, I want to read this. Uh, oh, look, the, the other thing I'd, sta uh, I'd say, Luxon only mentioned climate change once in his State of the Nation speech yesterday. It just seems to me that you're not, this is now such a religion that you're not really allowed to, to um, question it for fear of being burnt at the, sn the stake, basically, eh? Yep, that's correct. Yeah. I want to read this text I've got through from Stacey. Um, Sean, and just well, I'll pose a question to you after. Re Niwa, this would seem to validate the conspiracy theory that the government is deliberately skewing records and statistics to manipulate the population into a control state. In this case, using climate change, thank God, at least one investigative journalist went down the rabbit hole. But I, I don't think it does say that. I think it says that we have a a kind of overwhelming orthodoxy, which is dumb, but I wouldn't call it a conspiracy, Ian. I don't think people at NIWA sit down with people from the Greens and the Labor Party saying, let's do this. I just think the world's... No, it's, a bit, it's a bit like watching starlings in flight uh, as, as a flock. It's, it's the herd, herd mentality, the flock yeah. mentality. It's, it's a bit like a, a wave that goes through the culture and... and the, as you say, I, I, you know, well, I, can't, I can't speak for government agencies because they, they do do things according to political wishes. And I've worked in government before, yeah. but, yeah. The, but the, reality, the reality is there is a popular mood that this agency has created along with others around the world, which in New Zealand's case, the data clearly shows that our climate was much, much worse in our low carbon, colder past. And all my climate affair reporters saying was, here are the events that NIWA hasn't told you about, and obviously they don't know about. 
Well, uh, I don't know. The, I people... get the feeling that they know about them, but they don't want to put them in. We haven't validated them yet, is basically what they're saying. But I can remember from our last interview, you are using, and a lot of the newspaper reports were using barometric readings, accurate barometric readings from harbour masters and people on ships and shipping companies, uh, which were as good as you got for scientific measurement at the time. They were, and they still are. The um, the ships relied on bar- barometer pressure to decide the fate of the crew, so they they made sure they got it right. And and uh, recent studies by NASA and others have said barometric pressure is probably the best way to measure a storm because it still is a better indicator of how strong the winds are going to be, how much rain is going to fall, how devastating the, the cyclone of the storm is going to be. But the reality is, I, I'm not sure that Neva does know about some of these events. When I was tweeting them uh, in the lead up to writing Climate of Fear, there were some events they just simply didn't know about. Yeah. Uh, and certainly from their press release today, they don't have the data in their main database, which means they can't have made the destructive claims about about Gabriel based on past storms. So what have they done? What work have they done in 31 years? That's the question. Yeah. Where do you go to next with this, Ian? As I said, I think it's about, uh, you know, the, the media have, have, the mainstream media have, have closed up on this. They've, they've taken the punishment and the pain for the last week and they're just staying silent. The oh, they do break, they do break event, eventually, believe me, with the Nanaya Mahuda <laughs> stuff. We had two or three months in the wilderness before everyone jumped on the bandwagon and looked at where that took us. Well, I think, I think the, the key thing is this is that facts are, are weapons used correctly and so, and strategically. It's not about bombing every single. Uh, person out there with the thing saying should, you should research this. It's about just being strategic and reminding them every time the media make a statement, this mm. is the biggest on record, says Niwa. Mm. Fire the information at them because it has not been rebutted at all. In mm. fact, well, it was like Jack Tame on Q&A yeah. saying, you know, the headline was ACT Party leader denies being responsible for climate change denial, all based actually when you go back to the genesis on this bullshit from Niwa. Um, and it's yeah. just such bad journalism, Ian. Well, journalists hate being uh, pictured as wallies, and the reality is, even though they're not saying anything, they're feeling the pain, especially the CV journalists, because they like to look pretty and all the rest of it, as, as we both know. <laughs> <laughs> but but the, the reality is, when you make them feel foolish by constantly reminding them that uh, this information is out there and everyone knows about it, um, eventually that, that does have an impact on them, and it may well, as you say, break in two or three months. All right, well, let's keep talking, Ian, um, and say a lot of a huge response. Uh, to, to what yeah, you did last week. It's, it's, an, it's an important issue and it doesn't matter whether you whether people believe in climate change is, is real or, or man-made or, or, or natural. That's a side issue. Yeah. The issue is our past was far stormier. NEWA hasn't researched the past. If they had researched the past, would their advice decisions to council and government have been different? Could it have saved lives? Could it have saved money? Could it have saved building decisions and consents? There's a whole range of issues to go into this. It's not over yeah. by any stretch. Good on you, mate. Thank you for joining us again. Ian Wishart there from Investigate Magazine. You, well, we've got a link up the site. We'll have that interview up. Well, you'll be able to replay it pretty quickly if you're a Platform Plus man because that'll be up by around 10.30. Um, and, geez, we've got a lot of work. got a big meeting today. We're looking at online, the website, making everything work faster in sales. So I can tell you what, the platform going from strength to strength.